If you've ever played or watched some high elo NA East Coast games, you may have seen that flanking Moira wreaking havoc on the enemy back lines. So today we're updating the Moira one tip video with none other than Nolan. Hi everyone, my name is Nolan. I used to be a 4.5 Widow player, but I found myself in Moira and I peaked 4.6 using an aggressive playstyle. So let's start off with a general tip. Moira is a character that has new utility besides healing, but she's capable of both engaging and escaping enemies with her fade. Here are a couple of tips using it. First, always jump before exiting fade because it gives you a small movement boost to cover more ground. Second, look forward before fading because you get more movement speed while looking forward, which means you can go further. Third, there are three types of fade rollouts. Normal fade, backwards fade, and a fade jump off a small object. Fourth, fade after an enemy has finished reloading to bait them into shooting, which will waste their ammo. Fifth, hold fade when stunned. You won't have any input delay. It will activate as soon as the stun is over. Don't spam the button. With that, let's get it started. When playing against a team that's running a D.Va, I highly recommend using healing orb on teammates rather than aggressive damage orbs, because a good D.Va will always be looking to eat all the damage orbs near her. You simply get more value focusing on healing orbs here. You should also wait for her to use her boosters before fading, to get as much distance as possible between each other. You can also fade before the bomb explodes, so you get a small window of killing her in baby form. You will need to rush her with damage orb or get help from a teammate. Against Orisa, destroying your supercharger with your call essence is a high priority since it pierces through shields. If multiple teammates are being pulled, throw a healing orb on ground or wall if you're nearby, then fade. Against Rain Shatter, you can either dodge it by reacting with fade or space yourself so you're naturally always out of its max range. Your secondary fire range is the same as his shadow range, so basically, as soon as you can't hit him, you're safe. As strong as Coralescent is, try to play around corners so you don't get shattered if you know he has it. Never 1v1 hog unless his time is more valuable than yours. You simply can't kill him on your own because he has one-shot potentials and is self-healing. His hook is 20 meters long, which is the same range as Moira's secondary fire, so you can use it to your advantage to dodge his hook without pressing fade. When using your ultimate, it is 30 meters long, so you can safely damage him while being out of your range for his hook. If Sigma ults, you can fade before the lift animation to escape early. However, you can also allow yourself to be lifted with your teammates so that you can line up some healing for them in the air. Then, just before you get slammed down, throw a healing orb towards the ground and fade at the same time to maximize value and increase the chances of survival. Against Winston, you can out heal his damage with a self heal from your secondary fire with the heal orb. You can basically live forever like this if you are in a corner and can bounce the orb. This will waste Winston's time and make a lot of space for your team. Remember that Moira's heal is a slow projectile, so lead your heals to where teammates are being pushed by Monkey Ult. Against Ball, training a Colossus with his mind is worth it, since you can use it to steal heal teammates or damage enemies. The most important thing is deciding whether to use Fade when you get pile drive. Check if there is threats like Widow Headshots or any one-shot potentials. If not, you can save Fade and just use a healing orb towards your feet or above you if there is a ceiling. Against Zoya, the bubble stops both your healing and damage orbs, so don't position yourself in a situation where she can cut the line of sight easily. It will also stop you from refilling your juice and self-healing. Depending on the combo, you can usually out heal damage from Zarya's team after she grabs. Do an initial healing spray, then you get a lingering heal effect. Try to heal orb, then use call essence on them. Against Ash, you can fade a dynamite explosion or cleanse its burning effect if you're hit by it. Bob actually gives you juice and health when using second in fire. I like to either hold it on him if I need health or spam the ability if I need juice very quickly. If Bob is focusing you though, you better fade to find a cover because your self heal can't out heal his damage on you. But your primary fire and healing orb can pocket an ally. Against Bastion, you can poke him easily with damage orb if he is in sentry mode since he is not mobile and damage orb doesn't have damage reduction against armor. You should only do this to farm your ultimate at long range. 
in close range, use healing orb to pocket your teammates as it's a team effort to kill him. Against Doomfist, it's very important to escape with Fade if he uses Rocket Punch, but try your best to do a Fade Jump to reach high ground. If you go high ground after dodging, he will be forced to use Hoppercut to chase you, compared to staying on the ground where you can just use Slam. Against Psycho, you can take the sticky bombs and move it away from your teammates before fading to drop them on the ground. This is important when you're stacked with your team because your nearby teammates will still be hit by the explosion. Use that one second before it explodes to get as far away as possible before fading. It's very important to keep teammates above half HP. Make it a priority to heal or and pocket them so they don't die to the focusing beam. Genji has a movement speed buff when he's ulting that is similar to Mora when she's ulting as well. It's close enough that as long as you have some space between you, he can't really catch you. Your call healing is also strong enough to ult your blade. I don't recommend rolling Henzo unless his storm arrow is down, otherwise try to be as unpredictable as you can. If you get hit by his sonic arrow, you can actually carry it away, then fade to drop the arrow so he doesn't have vision of your team. If you get trapped by Junkrat, don't panic and fight right away, because it does not cleanse the trap. Wait and see if there will be danger first, and try to start it out. If you're using Tyre, you can destroy it while using Call after 1.5 seconds. Mercury is a very strong body one hero because of his slashbang. Always stay out of range of him, and his damage follow starts at 20 meters, which is your max range. Use this as a reference to position and space yourself. The only way to duel him is with your Call Ascent at the 30 meters range. Against Mei, always fade right before you get frozen, unless you just want to get out quickly. This will reset the numbers of free sticks for you to be frozen and slowed. Maximizing the time just before being frozen will let you do more damage or healing on teammates. If you are in an open area with no walls to bounce your orb, you will get more healing on a single target if you bounce the orb at your teammate's feet compared to a straight line. Against Vara, do not waste your damage orb in the air since it will usually get new value. She is a hard counter to you. There's not much you can do except use your Biotic Grasp if she ever falls in range. However, if you have Cole, you can actually crush her quite well. If she has a Mercy Bracket, focus the Mercy first. Against Reaper, he is strongest at close range so stay as far away as possible. Running away instead of life stealing is actually better. Otherwise, he does more and more damage and life steal won't save you. Fade when he leaves his Wraith to get max distance from each other. Again, look towards the direction you're fading Against Soldier, if a teammate is caught in the open, use your call to body them to make sure they can get out of line of sight. The visor is slightly more DPS, but as soon as he has to reload, your teammate can regain the health advantage since you don't have to reload call. Against Sombra, her hack is only 15 meters range, so you can always be in range to cancel it with your secondary fire. Unlike Lucio, Moira does not need to hide to counter EMP since she can easily fade out as soon as she sees the animation. Use the healing and call to pocket your teammates after their silence. In a duel, Moira has enough damage to kill her even with her mega health pack pocket as long as you use healing orb. If you know Symmetra as a wall, try to hold on to your call to counter it. Use it once you wall so you can actually transfer your call into a defensive ult. Against Torb, it's not your job to destroy turret, but if you do get close to it, throw a healing orb to fully tank it while you break it. Damage orb does nothing. Torb is a very hard matchup because you lose in every situation unless he misses everything and he doesn't use his turret. You do almost no damage to him if he has armor, so I don't suggest to go for a 1v1 unless his overload is down. Against Tracer, it's similar to Echo Stickies, where if you get stuck by Pulse Bomb and you're stuck with your team, use a bit of time before it blows up to walk away from your teammates and fade at the last second to drop the bomb. In 1v1, always do Healing Orb since not only will it prevent her from one clipping you, but it will also prevent your orb from going to waste because she can just blink away if you use a damage orb. Try to harass her as much as possible since it will force her to waste cooldowns. Losing HP can also prevent her from engaging and make her play scary. Against Widow, one single damage orb can get her out of position. Now that she's really squishy with 175 HP, you can use an aggressive Fade Jump to get to high ground. Don't forget that Fade can also cleanse the Venom Vine. If Hannah is slamming from a hallway or closed room, her damage orb can force her to waste nade on herself or force her out of position. If she nades you in a 1v1, you can wait a few more seconds before fading to cleanse the anti effect. I suggest using your secondary fire and fight only at the moment she shoots you with primary fire. 
This way, you cleanse both the NT and the damage takes while maximizing the damage you're doing to back to her. If you're calling a Baptist uses lamp, you can still hit both the lamp and enemies group near it. You just have to be a bit more precise at the edges. In a triple, always through healing her because it's most likely gonna lamp himself, so you need a sustain. If you use Rich and Burst while in lamp, make sure you attack him instead of the lamp because the lifesteal is much more important to stay alive. Even if he is at minimum HP, you will still get lifesteal even though you are not doing any damage to him. If you have coal in the enemy brig rallies, I recommend primary fire healing your teammates until your ult runs out and then you can call. Only use call if you need it to peel your team while a rally is active. Just make sure you don't get stunned. Brig only gains 30% movement speed and you gain 50% movement speed while you're both in your ult. In mod ones you can actually ult heal Brig's DPS with a healing orb. If you're in melee range, I suggest to melee her as often as you can to remove her hammer and to guarantee it goes through her shield. There's not a big tip against Lucio, except fade as soon as he boops you to kind of knock back and stay on the map. Against Mercy, you can kill her when she walk using a call. If she's pocketing someone, focus her first if possible. That's about it for this matchup. In a more of everyone, always through healing orb and self heal as much as you can. Be unpredictable as much as you can to prevent her from getting self heal and try to body block her from chasing her healing orb. In general, I do not recommend wasting your time on her unless you have another main heal on your team that can forgive the lack of healing. If your enemy more is doing the tip with healing orb, you can actually stop damaging her so that the healing orb does not heal and it speeds up and flies away. Then you go for damage orb and kill her. Against Zen, damage orb is call can kill him very easily for strengths. Running call with trends is worth because you get your ult faster and his ult can be more mindful than yours in specific situations. If he's ulting, you can still lifesteal off of him, but you will do no damage. Also, Freddy can remove the discard herb if you're being focused. That's all, thank you for watching the Moira remake and I'll see you guys next time. Merci de m'avoir invité, RQ. You can find me at twitch.tv slash